right, so this is Dimension Shift Rune with the uh, Enchanted Sword and Blade Mage. So, uh, D Shift Rune is a deck that's existed since the beginning of Shadowverse, and in this expansion, um, well, D Shift is still workable, but uh, a new variant of it has appeared due to some of the new uh, Tempest cards. So, the main thing to remember is that the deck's playstyle is very much the same as standard D Shift. Standard meaning the one with Shift and uh, uh, Flame Destroyers as your main win condition. But the, n the new cards added are uh, the Blade Mage, which is actually a Rise of Bahamut card. It's a 6-cost um, 2-2 Storm, but whenever you play a spell, then he gets 1-cost uh, cheaper. Then we also have Enchanted Sword. Enchanted Sword is a 7-cost spell, which... Uh, he was a follower, a plus two, plus two buff. And you know, honestly, this spell is awful. Like, everyone thought the spell was awful, and they were right. This is a very, very bad card. But the thing you have to remember is that this is Runecraft, and you know, Runecraft, it seems like part of the class design is they get all these cards that are quite terrible on their own, but if you build a deck around them, or if you have the right synergy cards, then they become quite usable. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why the class is so bad in Arena, right? Because, you know, Arena, you can't always draft for synergies. So this card, which is normally quite terrible, is actually very, very good in this deck. The reason is because it's a spell boost card, and the spell boost effect lowers its cost. So it, this is a 7-cost spell, but it is potentially a 0-cost spell. And anyone who has played D-Shift for a couple games knows about how powerful 0-cost spells are. So yeah, we have that card. And then we also have the, the new 2-drop that Rune got, Freshman Lou. And she has a very, very simple effect, so she has 1-1 one, one stats, really poorly statted, but sp she has a fanfare where she draws a, a random card with spell boost from her hand. The one thing that's important about her effect is the text. It says put a random card with spell boost. So it's not random spell with spell boost, like Merlin's effect. It's random card. So that means Freshman Lou can pull... Uh, Blade Mage for you, because uh, Merlin is limited to only spell boost spells, but she can even pull, or Lou can even pull, spell boost followers. So um, you're probably wondering, you know, like, why exactly would you play this over a normal D shift? So the main reason to play this, or pros of this deck over standard dimension shift, number one, it's actually cheaper. So in Tempest. Uh, the cost of a lot of decks went up, but this is one of those few decks that actually got cheaper. Because now with Lou, if we add Lou, it's no longer necessary to run three Merlins. So we can get by with only two Merlins and two Lou's for a whole bunch of draw. And the other thing that's cool about this deck is that um, if, you, if you play your cards right, or if things line up perfectly, uh, you can actually get lethal way faster than the standard D shift. So to understand this, you gotta think about the combo pieces, right? Because in standard D shift, the main combo pieces are it, it revolves around two cards, right? You have shift, and then you have destroyers. So it all revolves around two cards. Now in this deck, our main combo revolves around three cards. We have shift, enchanted sword, and blade mage, or any other you know follower that can attack. So because we have uh, more moving parts, you know, more necessary combo pieces, um, sometimes it does, you know, it is more draw dependent. But the, the main benefit is that the, the spells themselves are cheaper. Because if you compare it, you know, uh, Flame Destroyer is 9 cost, right? While Blade Mage is only 6 cost, Enchanted Sword is only 7 cost. And the other thing we can never forget about this deck is that Enchanted Sword is 7 cost, but it's potentially 0 cost. So because it it can turn into a free spell, it does allow us to get like surprise lethals, like even when we least expect it. So yeah, uh, that's the main difference. Um, in terms of playstyle, it's very, very similar. The one thing I'll mention is that for this deck, um, in the early game, you want to focus more on cycling compared to standard D-Shift. Of course, you know, if you're fighting against aggro or like a fast tempo deck, you always want to get onto the board just to stop the bleeding, right? But in situations where you have a choice of 
playing a follower or cycling on an empty board, you would usually go for cycling because uh, this deck is more reliant than standard D-Shift of getting the combo pieces into its hand to, you know, early as possible. So yeah, that is this deck. Uh, it's really, really fun. Highly recommend playing it if you've played D-Shift before. And uh, also one of the cheapest competitive decks around. Only one legendary needed, and this version of the deck, only two copies of this legendary. And then you have the standard gold cards you need, like uh, Shift and Levy. But yeah, other than that, everything else is uh, really cheap, very, very easy to find in packs. So yeah. If you want to learn more about D-Shift, uh, I'm not really going to go into it in detail in this deck. Or not, I'm sorry, not in this deck, in this video. Because I already made a video about standard D-Shift. So if you want more like uh, tips on how to play the deck, uh, go ahead and look up the related video link, which I have in the description. Dragon. So in the Dragon matchup, in this meta, you always assume it's Ramp. So because it's Ramp, you always want to mulligan for D-Shift and any Cycle cards. That's uh, actually an amazing hand. We've got Insight and D-Shift and the Merlin. So, really, really good shape here. So we play the Insight. Another Insight, good. Wow, this is an amazing start. Alright, got one of the combo pieces, and the levy. Didn't ramp, that's very lucky for us. Alright, so we're gonna cycle. Alright, that's it. Ayela. So we can kill it. But it's not really worth killing this. The reason why it's not worth killing it is because if we had killed it, then this turn uh, he would have had five play points instead. And five play points is the point where they can play the uh, Draconic Fervor. Because we didn't kill Isla, um, my opponent has only four play points, so the options are very, very limited. So yeah, it, it does suck that we have to take four to the face, but ultimately it's worth denying the. Uh, Draconic Fervor on 5 there. Alright, that's a really easy Merlin turn. Merlin Evolve. Our hand's full. So we're gonna have to play the Angelic Snipe face. Just to make sure we don't overdraw. So our hand is currently amazing right now. We already have both D shifts drawn. We even have a Blade Mage and a Fate's Hand for more gas. Yeah, see? So he had Fervor. So we denied that last turn. Alright. Um, things are getting dangerous now. Dragoncraft, next turn, uh, he has 9 PP. So that means we can now get Bursted down for 13 if he has the uh, Saha Kill Bahamut Zell combo. Um, but uh, since we have basically most of the combo pieces in hand, uh, we just want to focus on cycling. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a levy, we're going to bounce on a levy to cycle, and then if we don't get something better, like say a snipe or a golem, then we just play levy again. That's not a good card. Well, it's a combo piece, but now we're forced to play levy. Levy's probably going to die, so we're going to miss out on the Evolve value. Wow, Lightning Blast. That's a very interesting usage of resources. Alright, so we got a Cash. Cash is really, really good. Uh, we're definitely going to be caching the D-Shift. Let's just see what we get. We should be able to win next turn, actually. Alright. So, here we're just going to not overdraw him by playing the uh, one Blade Mage. Picked up a Snipe, fantastic, go face. Alright, so, if we don't die next turn, then we already have lethal. It might be a little hard to see, but uh, we have the 6 cost D-Shift, so we can obviously shift and go off. And then we have a 12 cost D-Shift, which is very, very expensive, but if you look at our hand, look at how many 
potential zero cost spells we have. We already have Enchanted Sword to zero cost. We have a Fate's Hand, which will be zero cost very, very soon. And then we have a Fire Embrace, which is six away from becoming zero cost. But it could very, very easily become zero since we have so many spells already. So yeah, we win next turn. Although maybe a little hard to see it. That's not going to be enough. Zell? Oh, it's going to evolve. He's probably trying to set up the uh, Sahakil Bahamut Zell lethal, but yeah, little does he know, we already win. Alright, here we go. Watch Missile Face. Again. We play the Blade Mage. Look at all these spells we have. Fate's Hand. We can play the Golem. Enchanted Sword. Enchanted Sword reduces our D shift to 1. Now we can go off. We could also play the Embrace for another free spell. Shift, and then Enchanted Sword. More damage. Oh, I misplayed. But it doesn't matter. He's still dead. I could have played the Enchanted Sword last turn to uh, push more damage, but it doesn't make any difference in the end. Alright, Forest. So in this matchup, we still... Oh, one second. We still mulligan for uh, Shift. And since we're going second, we're also going to mulligan for uh, Merlin. But because this is the Forest Craft matchup, one card we also keep is the Magic Missile. So number one, this is a card that cycles, which is always good for us. But because it's Forest Craft, we tend to play a lot of one health creatures. So Magic Missile gets a lot of value in the early game. Just to help us stay alive, clean up the board. There's Shift. Wow, still skip. Alright, so here we have a choice. Um, against most decks, um, in this kind of situation where you can play either Magic Missile or a 2 drop, we would actually play Magic Missile because this variant of D Shift is more reliant on uh, drawing a lot of cards early, you know, getting the combo pieces in hand. But um, since this is Forest, we do want to save the Magic Missile to get rid of Fairies. So instead, we're going to play Clay Golem. Just hope he doesn't have Silver Justice. He's got it. Wow, it doesn't play the Fairy. Alright. Well, we picked up Merlin, so that's very good. We have a turn 4 play. Um, and at this point, we're not going to save Magic Missiles anymore, since we plan on playing Merlin anyways next turn. So now we just uh, Magic Missile face. Insight's so good, play that. Alright. This is really good. Now he plays the fairy. Alright, so this is a very easy Merlin turn, just Merlin Evolve. It's good. It's probably going to evolve the fairy to, to push more damage. Grimnir. Alright, so we got another combo piece. So now we have Shift, Enchanted Sword, and Blade Mage, so in really good shape. And we have two Fates Hands, so we have a lot of gas to keep going. Uh, we can clear this with the Magic Missile and uh, Levy Evolve. And of course, we should always draw first, so we Magic Missile, and then we use Levy Evolve to clear. Why should I 
Wow, it doesn't play anything. Alright, so a lot of different plays we could do here. We should always just focus on cycling. We have most of the combo pieces in hand now. Now we just, what we just need is like uh, additional copies of Enchanted Sword or another shift. That would be the best case draw here. Insight. Alright. Golem. Zero cost Fate's hand. Hopefully draw something. That we can play? We can't. Okay. So now we just play the Blade Mage. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have to play it, but uh, we had to play that just so that we don't uh, overdraw. Okay, so we can almost go off. We have the shift. We can actually play shift this turn because we have uh, two zero cost spells, but if we do that, we don't have enough damage to, to win the game. So now we're just going to focus on stalling for one more turn, and depending on what we draw off the Fate's Hand, uh, we should be able to win. But anyways, we can remove this very, very easily with the, uh, the Wind Blast. So Wind Blast and then Fate's Hand draw more. Second shift, there it is. Come down to 11. Then we're gonna bounce our own levy. Just draw more. And cash is amazing. So we should be able to go off next turn. No evolve, wow. Alright, well we overdrew Blade Mage, which kinda sucks, but it doesn't matter. We should still be able to win here. Uh, even though the second shift we got is 16, which is very, very expensive. Again, remember, we have cash. And then we also have two zero cost spells here. Actually, more like three. The Blade, Fate's Hand, and the Fire Embrace. So yeah, we can definitely go for the combo now. Fate's Hand. Levy, and then shift. Oh yeah, this is super over.
私は貴様らを許容しない。私をこの程度と侮るなよ奏でるは悲しみの調べ以上です。